I'm the general manager of the Pastoral Greenhouse Gas Research Consortium, a uh, research consortium created by Beef and Lamb New Zealand and others in the pastoral sector to invest in ways to reduce greenhouse gases from our ruminant livestock. And um, we've been in existence since 2003 and uh, we've invested around about 80 million. Originally we investigated quite a wide range of different uh, areas but we've really hit upon four that we feel are practical for our industry. Uh, they are uh, low methane genetics, uh, low greenhouse gas feeds, uh, inhibitors that reduce the activity of the methane producing microbes and a vaccine that will use the animal's immune system to try and control those methane producing microbes. We're right at the moment uh, starting to roll out to breeders the opportunity to breed rams that have got lower methane uh, outputs than others and so that's kind of with the breeding industry right at the moment. We've also done quite a lot of work with forage crops that are available uh, in, for farmers and so we've done work with brassica rape uh, and we've collected the information to be able to put that into the national inventory. Uh, because our animals are mainly grazing, uh, that's going to have a small effect, but these both genetics and the low GHG feeds approach uh, will also give, op will give options to sheep and beef farmers. And the unit that we are in at the moment is the Greenhouse Gas Measurement Centre. What you see in, in, the, in the background of me are 24 respiration chambers for measuring methane emissions in sheep. This is the largest unit in the Southern Hemisphere. It's probably also the largest unit worldwide that, we, uh, that there is. And it was used within the PGTRZ program basically to identify low methane sheep. All the work was done in these respiration chambers. We identified low methane uh, plant material. And in addition, the, the work that was done was on vaccines and on inhibitors. All that work goes through these chambers here. So far in the breeding program, we have found that uh, we can breed uh, sheep that emit less methane and that it's predictable so that it can be used in breeding programs. We also have found that there are no negative or even positive consequences for uh, the economic index, so there's no negative consequences for production or animal health. In uh, egg research, we currently have two selection lines, a uh, high and a low methane selection line. And on, on average, they differ by 10%, and, uh, but the most extremes can differ from more than 20% uh, in methane emissions. We view inhibitors as being used either as a, a feed supplement type of situation where the dose isn't so important for pasture grazing animals. We're thinking of long-term capsules. But I think realistically, as far as uh, you know, when these would come to the market, it's probably a minimum of five years, probably, with all the regulatory hurdles that are required. We still have to get proof of concept that a vaccine will work in animals. We have uh, very encouraging results that indicate a vaccine can work. We can get a 20% reduction in methane. Uh, and that's quite a big reduction because some of the other mitigation strategies, um, although they're probably further on in terms of proof of concept in the vaccine, they have a more modest uh, reduction in methane. When animals are fed brassica, the amount of methane that is produced per unit of feed it's around 25 to 30 percent less than with dry grass so uh, very exciting results and uh, we are intending to do more work to uh, trying to make uh, these findings translatable into something that farmers can actually use and, and be recognized for doing on farm when we put together the expertise of animal uh, nutritionists with soil scientists, with people who understand life cycle analysis, we are in a better position to develop uh, a, a, a more holistic view of the, of the problem. Yeah, so uh, trying to make sure that something we do to reduce methane does not translate into a, a negative thing in nitrous oxide or, or productivity. I think I'm optimistic that we could find a combination of the animal genetic, 
something that we can do in the rumen, targeting directly the methanogens, uh, something that the animals uh, uh, have um, in terms of, of the, uh, uh, the way they digest the feed. Uh, so by the time that you start putting all the things together, I'm more optimistic about that type of a scenario than thinking that there's going to be one solution that is going to be a silver bullet that is going to solve the problem once and for all and for all the sectors. It's, it's about understanding the, the, the elements to actually design strategies that could be used for different farming systems. I'm optimistic about that. <laughs>